Hello, everybody. Coming to you live from the Kaiser University Radiology Lab is Mrs. Hartman and myself. I hope you can see me. We are going to um, walk you through some basic components of the x-ray room. Um, of course, the equipment here in the, uh, the console over here. And uh, we'll just talk a little bit about it so that you're a little bit more familiar with it. Again, we're going to have sign-up times to come in so that you can actually put hands on the equipment. Um, in the morning, when you do come in, remember that you do need to power up your equipment. I know both of us are going to be talking about this. So this is our digital side over here, and then this over here is our CR side. And then, of course, up here is that panel where you actually have to turn it on. If you don't turn on the electricity, you won't be able to move the equipment properly. And, of course, you won't be able to move. Um, whoops, here we go on this side. Okay, so power's up there. See our side, power's on. And now you'll be able to actually move your housing and everything like that. So over here on the digital side, just a couple things about the equipment. Do you want to walk them through the housing and the collimator and table? Sure. So this is your tube housing. So inside of this, you're going to have your glass envelope. So this is where you actually have the production of your x-rays. Underneath of this tube housing, in this area here, you actually have your tube port. So this is where the x-rays actually are going to come out of the tube housing. This box here is your collimator. The collimator is what allows you to be able to control the size of your radiation field. So we're going to shut the light off really quick so you can see that. That's that light field right there with the cross arrows in it showing you where the radiation is actually going to fall. So this is your central ray. So inside of this box you have two sets of shutters. So these shutters here are for the top and the bottom. So you can make your changes to your radiation field this way. This one here is for the changes of the, of the shutters to the left and to the right, okay? So you have that variance of whatever size radiation field that you want. On the front, you have the buttons that are gonna help disengage the locks so that you can actually move this tube housing to the position that you need. The first one here is your transverse. So if you push it in and while you're holding it, this allows you to be able to move your tube towards you and away from you, so going across the table. There is an automatic stop, which is your detent that you'll find for your transverse. And this is important because this will help you find the very center of where your bucky tray is under the table. So there's that bucky tray. I know we spoke about this last time in my class, and I know you'll be speaking about it definitely in your class. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't know. Why does it come out? It's very touchy. Yes. Okay, so this one here doesn't come out. On the other side it does. That's because the difference is this side's the digital, so this has a built-in detector. The other side actually has the use of the bucky where you'll place your cassette in there. And when you want to move that back and forth, there is the button that you'll push in. So everything moves with the lock, so you gotta disengage the lock and it'll slide. And we do that so we can center the image detector with the um, the collimator and the housing and your patient. And of course you have an upright, what we call an upright bucky over here. Um, and that one, a little button on the side. Yep. Same thing, just kind of slides up so that if you have to get your patient in an upright position, you can do that. Okay, so the other locks. Vertical, if you push this button in, this will allow you to move your tube up and down. The vertical button is important because this is how you're actually going to be able to set your distance. So general radiography, we use 40 inches as our distance, okay? And we're always going to use the cassette on this machine because we're using the built-in image detector that's in the actual table. And to figure out your distance from, for the upright, up here on the top, I don't know if you can see that, there's actual um, markers up here for distance up here. So that's 72 over there. So this would be 40 right here. And 40 is right there. And you can hear those locks click in. Um, that will click you into spot. And um, again, very important as Mrs. Harvin was showing you, you have to push these buttons in when you're moving that equipment. For example, if you want to angle it, you've got to push that button in to move it. Otherwise, it does not move back and forth. Same thing when you're going up and down. And if you do force it, then you can strip those gears and that's gonna be an issue. Yep. Um, inside, here's that collimator. 
Okay, again, so inside of that collimator, you've got that fil those filtration as well that we talked about, or will be talking about, that's going to filter out the soft radiation that could potentially become absorption uh, because it doesn't have enough strength to get from the machine, from the collimator, through the air, through your patient, and to the image detector down here. So you're gonna have that filtration in there. And also there's other um, shutters in there that are gonna kind of funnel that, in that radiation down. Um, ooh, transformer box mm -hmm. right here. And these wires here, if you follow them from the transformer, it will take you directly to the actual tube. So this is why we need this transformer to be able to get that high voltage that we need in that tube to be able to produce those x-rays. Yeah, now, We'll all be talking about more about this tube later on. Can you maybe just crank that down a little bit for me? Thanks. Inside of that tube is what's called the glass envelope. <clears throat> inside of the glass envelope, and it is just that, it's like a Pyrex glass, and it's sealed. And inside of this glass envelope are some very important components. One is called an anode, the other one's called a cathode. The cathode has a filament in it that heats up to a certain degree that you set on the console. We'll show you that in a little bit. And what that does is it allows you to regulate how, how much radiation you're producing. The anode, very important structure, it actually rotates. When the cathode produces those electrons, they'll be flung, and we'll talk about that later, later date, to the anode and then directed down to the body part. But again, very important. You'll always know which side your cathode and anode is because on the back of the tube, they actually have stickers. Oh, so that's right. the negative is your cathode, the positive is your anode. Oops, they usually have them on the top oh, and they usually go. have them on the <laughs> underside as well. Yep. So there's your negative. Oops, sorry. Why can I not find it on there? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Couldn't get on the view. And there's your positive. So this is your digital side. And your other side, the CR side, pretty much the same the thing. Oh, the table. Yep. The oscillating table. So that moves. So and around. again, what you do is just push down the bottom here and you're able to move that table into position. Remember, if you are tilting the table, you need to have the shoulder stop and the foot stop as well. Now over on this side is the CR side. And the equipment is really identical. The difference is that that bucky comes out for your film, slides out, because this side you're going to need to take that, um, that cassette that has the um, um, image receptor in it or receiver in it and you're gonna have to put it into um, a CR the, the CR reader over here to actually get the image to come up. Now depending on the size of your body part and the KVP that you use will depend if you can use this cassette on the table or if you have to place it in the bucky. On the outside of the cassette there are markings that help you determine where the center of that cassette is going to be and you basically will line it up with the notches that are on this You'll push it all the way back so it won't go any further. You'll lock it into place and push it all the way into the table. Okay, then you'll simply line it up with your patient and your housing and you're ready to go. So this kind of concludes a little bit about the rooms, okay? Uh, the next video is gonna show you the control panels.